Welcome to part seven of the intermediate Revit course. We're going to create a curved curtain wall and going to introduce you to massing in Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. All right, so this is a project I did for my last studio, Studio 7. It involved this curtain wall, which made up the facade of the entrance. This was all glazing. In fact, I didn't have any of this curtain system or this front entry door. It was just a, gl uh, a glazed wall. And I wanted up that and I wanted to show you how to create this curved curtain wall because it's something that I get asked a lot of and it's something that is quite difficult it seems to do in Revit but it's actually really easy. I used to avoid doing this in Revit and I would always do this kind of stuff in Rhino but it's really simple in Revit and I'm actually going to walk you through this whole process. I'm going to delete this curtain wall, I'm going to delete the curtain system so you can see there's a curtain system and then there's also the actual wall. And without that, there's nothing there, which is what we want. And this is going to get you familiar with some of the more complex tools of Revit, which is uh, massing and curtain walls and doing curves inside of Revit. If you want to get access to this file, you can do so by purchasing the course from my website. If you're watching this on YouTube, that is. And if not, that's fine. You can follow along. But I really highly recommend going through this with me because you'll learn a lot by actually doing it. So let's go ahead and get into creating this curtain wall. As you can see, we've already got the shape of the wall that we need by following this floor slab that is already modeled in there. And this has just been created using a floor slab. It's a generic floor that is using a spline instead of a straight line. So for example, when you're creating a floor, I've used the spline tool to create that shape and that has allowed me to have that curve. Once you've got the shape of the wall, which is done through this floor slab, then what we can do is go to a component in the architecture tab and then I'm going to click on model in place. So what model in place does is it allows you to create a model in place of the project. So I'm going to press G to come down to generic models. You can search for anything here. You can do walls or generic model, or you can make it a roof or something like that. Now, the reason why I'm doing it as a generic model is because then we can create a curtain wall from this. Later on, we can change that so that we can add windows and doors to this wall instead of it being a generic model where you can't add those things because they are wall-based families. So I'm going to create this as a generic model. You can name it whatever you want. And now you can see we've got a few different tools that we haven't been introduced to before. You've got extrusions, blend, revolve, sweep, swept blends, and also void forms. And these are all under the create tab, which are native to modeling in place, as well as families. So for this, we're going to use a sweep. And what a sweep does is it allows you to create a path and then give that path a shape, which will follow the path, really. So rather than trying to explain that, I'm going to create a sweep, and this is gonna create a solid sweep. And the first thing we wanna do as you can see, you can either sketch a path or you can pick a path. And since we've already got this path here, all we can have to do is select that path. And then that's the shape of the sweep we're going to have. So then obviously this is going to extrude upwards and create a wall from that. So if we click the green tick, once we've selected that path, what we need to do now is create a profile for that path. And so you can give this any shape you want. You can make this a pipe by creating a circle as a profile, and then that circle will follow this entire sweep. What I mean by that is that you have preset profiles. For example, you could make this a circular handrail that is 30 millimeters in diameter. If I were to select this and click the green tick, you can then see that it's created a circular handrail which follows that sweep. But that's obviously not what we want, so I'm gonna undo that. We're going to select that again, and we're going to go to Edit Profile instead of choosing a profile. If we wanna create a wall, we can give that wall a thickness. And so to do that, I'm going to go to an elevation, and I'm going to use the Rectangle tool. Where this reference plane is, that is the base of the sweep. So I'm gonna use the Rectangle tool to create the shape of the wall. This is how you would see the wall in section. It doesn't matter how tall we're going to make this, but we want it to be above the roof. So you can see that the roof is around about here. I'm just gonna make this about this tall and we can change the actual width of it once we've selected it. So at the moment, if we select one of these vertical lines, you can see that there is a dimension of 200 millimeters between them. So the wall is going to be 200 millimeters thick. If we wanna change this, we can make this 120. And that's probably going to be more like it because this is going to be a glass wall. In fact, a glass wall is probably gonna be 
thinner than this, but you could even go down to 80 or maybe 40 or 20, but we're gonna leave it at 80 for now. So once you've created your profile, you can click the finish edit mode. And if we go back to the 3D view, you can see that is the wall profile there, which is what the sweep will follow. Once you've created the shape of your profile, you can come back to a 3D view and select them all. And we want this to actually be in line with that sweep. So we're gonna select the corner of this and just move it over until we can find that sweep. So then once you've logged on to the actual sweep, you can click the green tick. You can see that it's created that mass. I say mass because this is still just a mass. It's not a wall, it's a generic model. But you can see that it's following that sweep with that profile that we created, which was 100 or it was 80 millimeters thick and however tall we made it, which we didn't actually specify a height for as long as it was above the roof. You can't actually just attach the top of this to the bottom of the roof. What you have to do is create a void, a void shape that cuts out this part above the roof. And so to do that, hit escape. And while still editing this model in place, we can go to create void forms and void extrusion. So what this is going to do is cut out anything above the roof. So to be able to actually draw this shape that is the shape of the roof, we have to set the work plane to be the roof. So if we click set work plane up the top here, and then go down to pick a plane, we can pick the plane of the roof. Now when we draw, we can draw in on the same plane as the roof, and we can actually pick the line, which is curved here so that we don't have to redraw that. And then we're going to just draw any shape that is going to cut out the rest of that roof there. And as you can see, it's a butterfly roof, so we're going to have to do this void cut in two parts. So once we've drawn in the shape of the extrusion, we can specify the extrusion end and start. So for the extrusion end, we're gonna make this 5,000 going up, and so that's going to be negative 5,000. And that number is just the guess, making it 5,000 millimeters above this point, which should cover all of that. And for the start, we're gonna make this whatever the depth of the roof is, because we want this wall to go up to the bottom of the roof. So whatever thickness the roof is, is going to be the value of the extrusion start. And the roof is 700 mils thick, so we want this to be 700 millimeters. And if we click the green tick, you can see what this has done. It's created a void shape, which is going to start at the bottom of the roof and then go upwards 5,000 millimeters or 5,700. And so then when we click off of that, you can see that that's cutting out that part of the wall now, which is what we want. So we're gonna have to do that again for this side as well. So if we create another void form, void extrusion, and we set the work plane to be that part of the roof. What we can do is draw in that shape again by picking the curved line and then drawing in the rest of the shape. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to cut out that part of the roof. So we can use the same extrusion end and start because that's going to work well for us and finish the edit mode. If we click off of that, you can see that that wall is now constrained to the roof. It's not necessarily constrained to the roof, that's one disadvantage of this. You're not actually attaching the wall to the roof and so if you change the roof or you change the shape of the wall, you would need to redo those void forms. I haven't found a better way to do it and I've done a lot of research on this. So I'm hoping Revit does come out with a better way or there is a better way to do it, but I just haven't found that yet. So let's finish this model and see what it looks like. And you can see that's created a pretty good wall, which is curved, which is what we wanted. And that looks pretty good, but we'll need to change the material of it so that it's actually glass and not a default generic material. So if we select the sweep once we're editing the model, you can see there's a material on the side here. So let's change this to be a glass. I'm going to choose a glass with a clear glazing. If we finish the model in place, you can see it's created that as glass. So already this looks pretty good. That's what I did, I got it to this point for my Studio 7 project, but I also wanna make this into a curtain wall. As you can see with this glazed wall here, there are mullions, which separates the curtain wall because it's very unlikely that you have a glazed wall like this without any support on any building. You're obviously gonna need some kind of vertical and horizontal support, and they're called mullions, what these things are here. To add them to this generic model, it can be a bit tricky, but I'll show you the easiest way to do it. So this is the reason why we created this as a generic model and not a wall, because now we can go to the massing and site tab and we can go curtain system. And what this will allow us to do is to select a face, which is a generic face. And this is going to create that face as a curtain system. So if I select the face of the generic model 
and I click create system, you can see that that's created a curtain wall system with mullions for that shape. Now you can see it's not perfect because it's created these square glazed panels. We could make these a lot smaller by changing the mullion sizes or by moving them in the actual model. You can unpin any of these mullions and then move them. However, that's probably not the best practice for us because we want to keep this a systemized system. Everything's in the correct uh, dimensions. So to edit this curtain grid, what you can do is select the curtain system by actually just selecting it in the model. And you can see that it's coming up with a actual curtain system type. You can see that there is a grid that is set up which shows how many mullions go where and it's 1500 by 3000. But if we edit this type and we change the spacing of the grid, you'll be able to change these panels. So if we make this less distance between them, there's going to be more of a curve because the panels are smaller. So let's change the spacing to be 500 by 500 and see what that looks like. Obviously there's going to be a lot more um, mullions then. So that's not quite what we wanted. We're still going to want the spacing to be pretty high. We're going to go 1500 by 2000 and that just gives us a bit more of a shape then. So if we click OK, there we go, we've got a curtain wall now set up on that glazing. And again, it's not perfect. You can see that because it's making them straight, it's not going to follow that curve exactly, but that comes to the point where if this is being constructed in real life, you're obviously gonna to have to create this in panels unless you get one big glazed sweep created by a manufacturer, which is very unlikely and very costly. So by systematizing it with these panels, it makes it more realistic. It makes it actually able to be built because you can dimension how far across a panel is and what are the dimensions of the mullions and so forth. This is the entrance coming in here. We're gonna want a door here. We can't actually add a door to this because it's a generic model. So to create a door and add windows to this curtain system, what we can do is change the actual model. So not the curtain system, we can change it to be a wall instead of a generic model. So what we've done is we've added a curtain system on top of this generic model. You can see that there is a curtain system, which is the system that we created for that generic model. And then below that, if we tab through, you can see that there is the generic model still there. So what we can do is change this by selecting it, editing in place that in place model again, create tab, and come up to family category and parameters. If we select that, this is where we can now change this to be a wall. So let's make this a wall and we'll finish it. Because we've already made the curtain system from the generic model, it's going to create a, another instance of that model as a curtain system. So that's separate from the generic model, which is now a wall model. It's a wall based model. So now any wall based families, they can be placed onto this wall. For example, windows and doors. So now if I press DR to create a door, we can place a door on this curtain wall. I'm gonna hit escape a few times, but you can see it doesn't actually get rid of the mullions that are in the way of that door. So what we can do is select the curtain system grid. So that's different to the actual curtain system. If I tab through, you can see the dotted lines there. But if we select the actual curtain wall system, which is going to be the grid, you can add or remove segments of the curtain wall. So if I click on that and I select one of these mullions, you can actually just click on them and it will get rid of them in this curtain wall. So I'm going to add and remove segments for all of these curtain grids. And I'm going to have to select them all individually, add and remove the segments and then select them. Then when we escape out of that, you can see it's deleted those curtain wall mullions. I'm going to do that one more time for this bottom one and this one too. And there we go. Now we've got a clean glazing face around this door that we've just put in. So that looks pretty good. If we have a look at Enscape, we can actually render this out and see what it looks like. And hopefully it looks really good in the renders. So I'm just gonna fly down here and we can have a look at this curtain wall. So that looks pretty awesome, if I may say so myself. It's much better than what I had in my original render. It's actually got a curtain system on it and it's all still glazed and there is now an entry door as well. Now, because the generic model is still behind it, you can't actually walk through that door in Enscape, which is fine, you can just fly through it. But that's just the idea of how you've got the in-place mass behind it and then you've got the curtain system on the outside. But anyways, that looks pretty awesome. You've got a curtain system which curves around this entrance and looks really nice. You can see how it's also attached to the roof. Some parts of it may look a little bit 
uh, janky, if that's the right word, for lack of a better word. All in all, that's pretty awesome and that's what we were going for. In the next lesson, we're going to go over design options in Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.